Today we're going to truck around the homestead here and taste some early apples. These are the basically the earliest summer apples. So let's see what we got. Top of this tree is William's Pride and I just, everything in the bags or most of the stuff in the bags are cross pollinated for breeding. And I just harvested this entire basket of apples. All of these are cross pollinated with specific things for breeding. Here's Wittig Pippin, watermelon flavored apple that I, that's one of my seedlings. Um, so yeah, I mean, I really went in all in with Williams Pride this year because the seedlings, we're going to go look at them in a bit, uh, that I have gotten so far are very promising. So I think that in terms of breeding, especially for early apples, but also for disease resistant apples and just for good apples, I just think this is a great parent. So we're going all in on that. And the ones that are still up here in the bags are basically just not ready yet. It's really ripening early this year. Typically, I think of this more as an August apple. So things are definitely ahead of schedule this year. These are ripening early this year, which is nice because I get apples earlier, but the quality is not as good when they ripen early, I don't think. You know, you can really tell with early apples, like if it's an early, a very early apple that has a long ripening season, like they'll kind of ripen gradually. You can really see a difference between the very first apples, like say on July red and the later apples in terms of like the richness of flavor, the sugar content just overall quality. It's because they just don't have time to ripen. And this is the great problem of summer apples. The typical summer apple of the past is thin tasting, more on the acidic side, like a little bit low in sugar, often a little bit low in flavor, and then kind of like ready and then mushy right away. So the real problem of summer apples is breeding apples that don't fit that description. And Williams Pride typically is one of them, but it usually ripens in August. And you know, these ones that have been ripening since like mid July, they just don't seem to be of the same quality, but they're still good and it's still nice to have them early. And I, I could eat a lot of these. You know, now that I have a lot of them, I'll be eating like five or six of these a day probably. So these really early ones tend to taste just very apple like a really concentrated cider flavor. If they ripen later, they'll tend to get, you know, I think a little bit more complex flavors, but they're still really good, great to have them and uh, just a great apple overall. Definitely, you know, something for any collector to try for sure, like, you know, Grafter Williams Pride Branch and try it out. Okay, here's Trailman. And I don't know if we can find something that's reasonably ripe in here. Again, this is, I have had this ripen in, in July, but I typically think of it more as an August apple. Yeah, so there's a couple that fell off. They might be riper. And these are cross-pollinated with Sweet 16. All right, let's try that. Hmm, a little overripe. Oh, that one. I, you see how instead of talking, I was just taking bite after bite after bite? That's a good sign. I wouldn't call it great, but it's, it's d definitely very good. Even though this is a little overdone, it still has a crispy or kind of like crushing uh, fine grain juicy texture so these are close to ripe but a lot of them are not i think most of them are not those just happen to kind of fall off of the stem in the bag so here's a control bagging that i made you know i, I bagged some blossoms without pollinating them at all just to see if they would self-pollinate and so far i haven't found a single one of those that had any apples in it so it doesn't appear that most of my apples are, are at all self-pollinating, which is what I would expect. Okay, Trailman, super cold hardy. I try to send the apple seeds from this north. Uh, this year I didn't even list the Trailman seeds, and I was going to send them to this guy in Alaska, but I, could, I lost his uh, contact info and I could not find it for the life of me. So I still have a bunch of Trailman seeds in the fridge they're going to have to wait until next year but i definitely want to get them up you know way up north um, because that's where they're really needed there was a thread recently on facebook i think it was the north american fruit explorers nafex um, group probably someone had posted that trailman was their favorite apple uh, period that's a thing with crabs like you'll see a few of these crabs show up on favorite apple list and sometimes as people's top favorite. I'm pretty sure, I gotta ask him again because I keep forgetting to ask, but I'm pretty sure Chris Hamanix told me that this apple right here, 
Centennial is his favorite apple. So the apples that showed up is like pe the people talked about the most in that thread, crab apples, were Trailman, Chestnut Crab, and Wixen, um, and a little bit of, I think, Centennial. Now, I think that if my crab, my new crab, Cherub, little pink flesh crab, were out there already, you know, circulating, that it probably would have been in that discussion too. But this is the first year that I've actually fruited this to where it's actually ripe and, and seems good. And this is Centennial. I tried to graft it many times and it, you know, just things went wrong. And these have been really good this year. You can see the similarity between this and Trailman. So I'm guessing these are related. Um, also, it's uh, supposedly related to chestnut crab, but I don't know if this is derived from chestnut or chestnuts derived from it. But let's try Centennial. I really think this actually could be a little bit riper. Um, but even so, it has really nice forward aromatic flavors. I'm going to say maybe citrus and some kind of stone fruit flavor. I, I almost feel like it reminds me of a loquat. I'm not sure I can really place the flavors, but they're really nice. So yeah, this is a great apple. I started using this for breeding as soon as it started blossoming, even though I've never tasted it, just on reputation. Because again, it shows up on, you know, people like apple nerds favorite lists you know so yeah definitely a lot of uh, potential here i've already started crossing it look at this so this entire bag of williams pride is pollinated with centennial and that's an obvious cross to make two very high quality early apples i've also crossed this with wixen and then chestnut crab so apparently chestnut crab is related to this so that's kind of a back cross i also think that i can recognize some of the flavor of chestnut in this because chestnut does have a very bright fruity flavor and that's how i describe this very kind of bright really cool looking forward to more of these it seems to be a very weak grower i have like a couple of branches here that really i think would benefit from being on its own tree Here's some precious centennial seeds uh, pollinated with Wixen. Now that's also a no-brainer cross for sure. This could produce something amazing. Okay, here we have Molly's Delicious. And can I get those? Oh, well, that decides that. Birds love this apple. Ugh, soft. Soft. Well, again, weird year. These have all gone soft. It is interesting flavor. It has an anise flavor for sure, like distinctly. I might use it for cooking or something. It does have very good texture. It's not very juicy, kind of dry. Also, you know, anise flavored apples sound fun, but it's really not my favorite flavor in an apple. Okay, off to the other orchard. Just gonna water this new apple tree here. This is on a rootstock that somebody just sent me called Bud 10. Um, it looks more vigorous than Bud 9. And it just sounded really interesting from what he told me about it. I was sent a few of these to try out. I'll water this more thoroughly later. This is just to make sure the growth doesn't stall. Like it's still actively growing and I don't want the growth to stall out. And make sure it has plenty of water. And these are grafted to my new varieties. So that one is pink, pinker lady. So grenadine or uh, Pink Lady X Rubiot, I think, or vice versa. And this one is Amber Wine. Yay. And these trees are small enough that when I move, I can take them with me. Yeah, I may even try to move some of these, believe it or not. Okay, one of the earliest apples here is July Red. And let's see if we can find a decent one here. Let's just try this one down here. Uh, can get a lot redder than this. Again, early year, you know, not particularly firm. Yeah, pretty soft. It can develop very nice flavors though. And this is in the lineage of Williams Pride. And when you get a good one of these, which is rare, admittedly, you can see why it would have been chosen to breed with, you know, to breed early apples. I honestly don't think it's worth tasting any of these. So I've been like eating these as stewed apples, just like sauteed with butter, sugar, and cinnamon you know they're okay you could make a pie with them but they're kind of soft and not amazing carolina red june well it is certainly red hmm overdone 
I think this one might be worth a try for some people. It's a southern apple, so maybe in the south. It really hasn't impressed me so far, but it, it's, it's shown a little bit of promise. I could see it being better, quite a bit better somewhere else. Okay, I think the only other thing we have to taste today that I can think of is twang. So this apple fruited for the first time a couple years ago. It was very precocious. Um, out of this whole year of pollinations, 2015, it was the very first um, apple to fruit. It's a cross between Williams Pride and Vixen. And this block right here of, I think it's seven trees, are all fruiting now. And they've, a lot of them showed great precocity and none of them have been spitters yet. So that's why I'm so into breeding with Williams Pride right now. Now Twang, the first year, it was like a little disappointing, the first apples I ate. Later it was much more promising, later in the season that first year, because it does seem to kind of ripen gradually. Then last year it was kind of disappointing and I was like, eh, this is probably going to be a call, like it's probably not going to make it, but maybe as an early summer cooking apple. And then this year I've been eating them for at least a week, more, probably more than a week, just early drops and early ripeners. And it's showing quite a bit of promise again. I mean, it's this is actually in the conversation for sure. So I'm gonna see, I think this one here might be somewhat ripe. Yeah, for sure. There's maybe a little bit of an odd bitterness to it. This is still a tad bit green. It has the best texture, uh, maybe not the best, but one of the better textures of the apples we tasted today. I think those two little crabs are better, but you know, those little crabs often have really good crispy uh, fine grain texture, but this cleaves off in big chunks. It's kind of crunchy. The flavors are good. Slightly complex flavors that I would kind of tend to go toward like tropical fruit, uh, maybe a little bit like Pink Lady. As far as everything I've tasted today, I mean, it's definitely in the mix. Like it, it's, it's worthy of being in the conversation. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. There is an odd little bitterness to it that's not tannic. It's like actually kind of bitter. I don't know if that'll go away as they ripen more. If I was thinking of what we've tasted today, like what I'd get for cooking, like if I wanted to make a pie, it would probably be at least 50% of this and maybe throw some of the other stuff in, but yeah, mostly this. Twang is back in the conversation. We'll see how these uh, develop as they ripen more. This is the ripest one I can find right now. I don't think any of the rest of these are worth really picking today, but you know, every one that I've picked out here, I finished eating. So that's saying something. And of course, looking forward to tasting the rest of these. Amber wine, I believe I've tasted this one before and it was really promising, but there was only one apple last year. This is the uh, apple that's kind of cone shaped and it's a lot like an early bite me. It has the umami flavor. This one I've never tasted before, that one I've never tasted before, and that one I've never tasted before. Pretty exciting. I really should trellis these up though. Yeah, so, you know, I think there's just a huge amount of potential to produce more early apples, something I'd like to work on, but given all the other apple classes that I'd like to work on, like crab apples, red fleshed apples, late hanging apples, russets, you know, et cetera, high flavored apples, it's not the highest on my list, but it's pretty cool. And we could definitely use a lot more of them. Like in the old days, early apples were a lot bigger of a deal because you'd been without, you know, fresh apples or just stuff out of storage, which in most cases is not very good. You know, that is kind of the exception to have an exceptional apple out of storage really late, especially getting into, you know, the summer. Apples were used as a staple food. So apple pie, you know, wasn't just a dessert. It was like a, a staple food. So that allowed people to start making, you know, fresh pies and applesauce and stuff like that again. So not quite as relevant today, but, you know, it depends on your lifestyle, what lifestyle you choose to live. So catch you later.